Just look at this thing. This is the Meze album, my friends. The contours, the bulbous curves, the masculinity behind it all. Is there anything more amazing and sexier than this right now? I'm still waiting. I mean, God. But anyways, let's find out if these in your monitors from Romania, which has been getting tons of attention lately, is truly, according to Gear Up anyway, bomber or bummer. The Meze Alba retails for $160 and it comes in this slightly off white pearlescent paint job that sparkles under the right lighting. It's pretty darn nice uh, in person. Now, there were some paint chipping issues on the logo area in the early batches or something, but that largely seems to have been resolved. In the business end of things, nothing fancy here. Single drivers, 10.8 millimeter dynamics on each end, and the weight for each unit is 13.4 grams. When you add the cable as well as the dongle, it's 72 grams altogether. Now, uh, the dongle itself is uh, included so you can connect this to your mobile phone. There is a 3.5 to a USB-C connector and it also has a built-in DACM. The cable is okay for the price. It's rather thin, but it's really nice. It's uh, 1.2 meters, really nice quality as well and embellishments here and there that matches the color of the earbuds themselves. Uh, and it has outstanding handling noise resistance. For those of you familiar with Meze IEMs, you can tell that the molding for the Alba is like lifted straight off the way more expensive Alva. And that's not a bad thing at all because the Alva was a looker all by itself. And now you get this for 160 bucks. You can tell that putting on the ear tips is decently quick, but once it's on there, it's nice and tight. Uh, the nozzle is also really nice, protected by metal grill. Um, in the box comes only silicone ear tips they're kind of stock not very super nice but it is comfortable and the seal is pretty good but if you want to upgrade you have to you know fork out all your own cash there are no foam tips included in the packaging just some replacements right here uh, silicone as well also in the box is a carry case which looks really nice the leather it looks like a leather pouch or something like that the zipper is of decent quality it's not super smooth but it's all right my problem with it is how small it is on the inside it's really thick and i wish they had just made this a little bit bigger or just thinner on the inside there is a uh, pocket here. It's totally not a bad thing how Meze made the Alba a twin of the $700 Advar. And I know I said Alva earlier, but anyways, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This thing rocks its high-end build and looks. Side-on, it looks like a cross between a high-end standing speaker and a twin scroll turbocharger for what it's worth. It's a really beautiful piece of kit, this. The ear tips, let's put it this way, are basic and probably cost like what? 18 cents to make, but surprise, surprise, the stock tips work better than I expected. So when combined with the good weight distribution, I can wear these longer than most other IEMs. For the most part, SQ is neutral-ish, but Meze added this slight V-shaped tune. Plus there's this sense of cohesiveness between all the moving parts that I think will definitely please most listeners. Bass is not the sub bassy kind, but most of the best bits are in the mid bass where it responds, the body and depth are hard to fault. Now, the best part of the album though lies in the mids. Vocals, instruments in this sector like ooze, authority and texture and clarity without being harsh. For example, um, Nora Jones doing Wish I Could, every guitar slide and pluck are distinct while Nora's like smooth mezzo soprano vocals are focused slightly forward right in the front of my face. As for treble, the Alba has two personalities. For the most part, it's quite well controlled. I would say this region has the kind of energy that most folks would like. But on the flip side, and you know what, this might be a good time to move on to the negatives. Well, the Alba's treble has an ugly side, unfortunately, and I would usually lump these kind of things under SQ as a side note or something, but it's major enough in this case to qualify as a con on its own. And some of you may not agree with me on this, but that's what I'm hearing. So here's my beef. There is a rise somewhere in the 13 to 15K region that makes things a touch spicy. And on paper, it's no big deal. But in practice, it's like a two-edged sword. Like it's an on-off switch. You never know which way it's gonna teether. It's really sensitive to what kind of music you're listening to, what your playlist consists of, who the artist is, or the quality of the source recording. So things like cymbals and timpanis can sound nice one moment and get too harsh 
at the next moment. And one example of the source recording reasoning is pretty much anything from locks. If you know, you know. Um, you can feed the Meze the highest bitrate, best codec file from their albums all you want, all day long, but it will still sound shrill and crappy because let's be honest, Locke's albums sound like they were mastered by school kids or something. To my ears, the DAC amp, while it's great in and of itself, it elevates you know, the smoothness and the clarity of the sound quite a bit. It also accentuates those small unpleasant bumps along the way, making this part of the treble even more grating. So depending on the song or artist, sometimes to preserve my sanity, I just prefer to listen without the dongle. This last point is more of a conspiracy theory thing that just popped in my head one day while I was testing these IEMs. So hear me out. Now, the fact that the DACAM dongle is only highlighted once in the product features page without any listed specs anywhere is kind of sus. And the way it was shipped in a separate box apart from the Alba packaging makes me wonder a couple of things. Did Meze realize late in the production stage that something was missing in the Alba's tuning, so they decided to throw in a DACAM to cover it up? Or, you know, is it just simply Meze giving its customers, especially those new to the hobby, what they need to get going without buying something extra? Anyways, vote down below. Yeah, I told you my mind is crazy sometimes, so there you go. I think I see who Meze is targeting with the Alba. It's aimed at buyers looking for a premium entry-level IEM, those wanting to move up from their $40, $50 buds to something nicer without spending too much. I mean, $160, guys, for something this competent is fantastic value. Even with the unpredictable treble sparkle, you can live with that, or if you can't even hear it, that's even better. This thing's got chops. Does it sound like a $250, $300 device like some people claim? Hex no, man, but it definitely looks it and gives something like the Sennheiser IE300 a run for its money. So yeah, well played, Meze well played. This episode is potentially one of the more contentious ones I've made so far, you know, between my notes about treble. It's not the most popular opinion out there, but it's really what I heard. I definitely like these. I Don't get me wrong. Top three, put it on your shopping list come Christmas time. Yeah, this thing is amazing. But, you know, those are things that I heard and noticed. If you like to see more content like this, and thanks also to Meze for sending me this loaner unit to entrust to share with you guys. If you like to see more content like this, you know what to do. Thumbs up this video, subscribe and all that such. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world, because guess what? If you haven't seen the news between all the wars and the floods and everything, the world needs it more than ever. And it starts with you. I love you all very much, guys. Peace out and God bless.